email docs, um, sites, calendar, et cetera, and then take a look at some of the other Google products. All right, so email. Um, there is a Gmail app, and it has been improved upon. I would say that it's OK or, or good. It's not great. Um, I think there are some issues with it. But it does have some advantages over the native mail client on iOS, one of which is labels. And if you're a Gmail user, that's huge. Um, I don't want to have to decide whether I'm going to put a message into one folder. I like to be able to apply multiple labels. Uh, and so that Gmail app allows me to do that. Also, muting conversations. I don't know how many of you belong to any kind of listserv, um, but sometimes there's conversations or I'll get emails that I really don't care about. Uh, so I can mute those. I'll still get the rest of the emails, but uh, again, they're not proliferating inside of my inbox. So I like that I can mute those in the Gmail app. Um, you can mark messages as spam. Uh, Gmail has excellent spam filtering, so that's a great option. And you can add drawings to your messages. How many of you have used the Gmail app on your iOS device. OK, so, so a few of you have. All right. Well, there's another app out there um, which is called Sparrow. Now, it is still being supported, although G, you know, Google did buy, or I should say bought this product or absorbed them into uh, their team. But you can still use it on iOS. And supposedly, the developer tweeted out that they were going to make a version uh, for the iPhone 5 to accommodate the larger screen. And Sparrow is pretty awesome. The only thing that it lacks is it doesn't have push notifications. Uh, but you can do that with another app that's available in the App Store, and I'll talk about that here in a minute. So with Sparrow, you can switch between your inbox, priority inbox, unread, and starred, something that you can't do uh, in the native app that's on iOS right now. How many of you?
demonstrate for you here in a second. One is that supports multiple Google accounts. Unfortunately, the Drive app doesn't do that. So you sign into one account if it's your personal one. For you here in a you sync all your Drive. One content. is that supports you sign multiple into your other accounts. accounts. Unfortunately, the Drive app doesn't do that. So you sign into this one account if it's your personal one. You sync all your Drive. One is that supports sign into your other accounts. Unfortunately, the Drive app doesn't do that. So you sign into this one account if it's your personal one. You sync all your Drive. One is that supports sign into your other accounts. Unfortunately, the Drive app doesn't do that. You sign into this one account if it's your personal one. Uh, you get notifications, so it supports notification center so that when you, uh, you know, when somebody updates a file or a notification, so it supports notification center so that when you, uh, you know, when somebody updates a file or a notification, so it supports notification center so that when you, uh, you know, when somebody updates a file or a notification, so it supports notification center so that when you uh, uh, and it's you know, capable, that's another big that I want to do is printation. But when you uh, if you do have to print something and there are going to be a page that you do, then but when you if you do have to print something and there are going to be and so I had the first thing I have to do is put in my password so I can't access my account until I put it in. And now it's going to resync. And so I had the first thing I have to do is put in my password so I can't access the top here. It's really nice because I put it in sort and now it's going to resync. So I had RPC drawing during my password. So I can access the top here. It's really nice because a lot of my password is created. And now it's going to be a file. I got all these different files. So I can edit it here. It's really nice because a lot of my password is stored. And now it's going to be a file or something else. So I got all these different files. And what I like is that I've got those different provisions. So, for example, I can tap on this provision, and that's going to load it, download it, and I can that, you know, and make that. And what I like is that I've got, and it will do that. So, I can tap on this provision, and that's going to load it, download it, and make that. And what I like is that I've got, and it will do that. So, I can tap on this provision, and that's going to load it, download it, and make that. And what I like is that I've got, and it will do that. So, I just say restore, restore this revision. And now it's going back to that earlier version of the document. And so I just say restore. Then you can also manage your sharing permissions. So I can tap on share. I can add collaborators here as well. And so I just say restore. Then you can also manage your sharing permissions. So as I mentioned earlier, I have share, but I can add collaborators here as well. So I just say restore. Then you can also manage your sharing permissions. So as I mentioned earlier, I have share, but I can add collaborators here as well. So I just say restore. Then you can also manage Manage your sharing permissions. So it's very similar to Drive. Here, here, and I have Then you can also manage your sharing permissions. So it's very similar to Drive. Here, here, and I have Here, and I have Here, and you can also manage your sharing permissions. So it's very similar to Drive. Here, I'm not a big fan of the no leather calendar in iOS. Four, and you can also manage your sharing permissions. I mean, it's cute, but I, I really am I'm not a big fan of it in terms of usability. So there's this app called Calendars by Riedel, and I like this one a lot better for several reasons. One is that you can actually access your task list from within the app. So there are apps out there that you can use uh, you know, that will allow you to access your Google Tasks separately, but this integrates your task list with your calendar just like it is online. You know, so it's easy to manage your calendars. The task list is innovated in integrated into the list view. And a couple other cool little features. You can add specific locations to events. So if you have a wireless connection or 3G on your iOS device, it will hone in on where you are, and you can add that location to the event, or you can type in an address. And it supports multiple notifications. So you can be notified via email, text message, or an alert for each event that you create on your calendar, which is something that the built-in calendar does not support. Anyone a big fan of the built-in calendar? I don't want to hurt you. I mean, I, I, you know, I don't want to make anybody cry. I, mean, I understand. Um, so let me go ahead and show you that one. So this is what it looks like. And I just, like I said, I think it's a much cleaner interface. You don't have the little, like I said, like desktop blotter calendar around it. Same features here. I can drag and drop these events around. So if I need to move this to another day, I can just drag it and put it there very quickly. 
when I go to list view, you're going to see my task list over there on the left-hand side, so I can add tasks to it. And that would also sync with my task list in Gmail and calendar. You've got day, week, month, and year view. Um, and when you go to add an event, so let's say I go back to week, I hit the plus button to add a new event. Here's where I was talking about, for example, for location, it'll pull up a little map, and it's going to locate me where I am right now in Michigan, and I can add that as the location to the event, or I could type in a specific address. Then you also have different, uh, let me go back up here, reminders. So if you look down at the bottom of the screen, I can set alerts, email, or SMS. So if you need to be reminded 10 times about something you have on your calendar, this app will do it. Uh, and for me, that would be my anniversary. So this is, this is absolutely perfect. I, that way I don't spend a lot of time on the couch. So um, like I said, clean interface. It's got some other cool features, and I like that my task list is right there instead of in, in a separate app. I have not. What's the name of it again? Calamob. Nice and clean, right? Good. Awesome, thank you. I have to check it out. I was not aware of that. Yeah, that's six ninety nine, so yeah. Don't buy my app, that's terrible. Get what this gentleman recommended. That's <laughs> It's much better. <laughs> All right, for tasks, um, and this is available on iPad, iPod Touch, and iPhone. I like G Tasks. It's free, but if you want to be able to create a limited task, and I don't know if it's like after 200 tasks, they're like, okay, stop with the tasks. You have to pay the $3.99. But there, there is a fee if you want unlimited tasks. Again, I like it because it's simple task management. I've tried all these getting things done apps. It's too complicated, and I'm not going to use it. You know, so I, I think it's good to find apps that are simple, that are easy to navigate, and I think then that way you'll use them instead of ignoring them. Um, and one really powerful feature is it, it's got that geofencing built into it so that it will notify you when you're leaving somewhere, arriving somewhere, or close to a location, it'll pop up a notification. So you can say, when I'm leaving work, remind me to you know, pick up the dry cleaning. Or when I arrive at work, remind me to run off these copies, and it will pop up. And that works, I think, on, like I said, iPhone 4 all the way up. Uh, and it works on any iPad that's got the 3G built into it. So I really like the location-based alerts. It supports local notifications as well, so it's not actually pushing the notifications. It's, it's using the lo local notifications on the iPad. And it supports multiple Google accounts. So if you have task lists in your work account and you have task lists in another Google account, you can have them all merge into this single app. Google Sites, and this is probably going to be the most uh, unsavory part of my presentation. There is actually that I have found, and if somebody in the audience knows, I have not found an app that will allow me to edit Google Sites pretty much at all. Um, so if there's one out there, that's, you could just shout it out. I, I don't know of it. But the good news is that you can use the full desktop editor in your browser. So if you have Chrome or Mobile Safari or one of those other browsers installed on your iDevice, you can actually access the full sites editor. It's not great, but it works. So hopefully they'll come out with an app sometime soon. All right, and this is the last core app, which is Google Chat. Um, and the app that I, again, like, and there are other ones out there, is Beehive. That's how you pronounce that. And that's $9.99. It doesn't do video chat. It doesn't do voice chat. It just does the instant messaging piece of Google Chat. Um, there was another product out there called VTalk, which was awesome, but it doesn't work anymore. And I think the reason is because Google has now integrated Hangouts into Gmail, and so it just totally doesn't know what to do. It just crashes, uh, and your iPad starts smoking. So that's why I recommend this one. Uh, it will not cause irreparable harm to your iPad. Um, and like I said, if you need to instant message somebody, it's great. The other cool thing about it is that you can set it to not time out after seven days. So you'll stay signed in, uh, and you'll still get notifications if somebody messages you up to a week. 
Uh, you can send images if you want to. You can do voice notes. You can send to somebody in location. Like I say, stay connected for up to seven days. So you can open it up, sign in, leave it running. And if somebody sends you a Gchat message, you will get that. OK, so now we're going to take a look at some of the additional services that are out there uh, and some of the apps that you can use, so outside the core apps. Um, Blogger. There is, I believe, I think it's just for iPad, or sorry, not iPad, iPhone and iPod Touch, there is an actual native Blogger app that Google came out with. It's OK. I really like this app called Blogsy. Um, it's pretty awesome. And so what it does is it's not just for Blogger. You can also update other blogging platforms like WordPress. It'll tap into all those. But probably more importantly is that you can add images and hyperlinks in video from other cloud services. So for example, you can sign into your Flickr account. You can sign into your YouTube account and drag and drop videos from those accounts or images into your blog post. It's just sign in, drag it into the post. It puts it in there. That's it. You don't have to do anything else. So it's really, really streamlined and easy to use. Um, and there's a whole bunch of services, so it's not just Picasa and YouTube and Flickr. There are a couple other ones that you can use to pull in media very quickly into your posts. So let me go back. And I'll show you that one. So this is what it looks like. Uh, actually, it looks different on my screen. Maybe it's going to update. We'll see here. Hold on a second. Oh, there it goes. So you can see, uh, you know, I'm ready to write my post. I'm signed into my Blogger account. And over on the right-hand side are the list of the different web applications or sites that I can pull media in from. So for example, you'll see YouTube, Flickr, Picasa, and then I can also pull in um, hyperlinks from Mobile Safari. But it's so simple. I go to my Picasa web album. And I can go to my photos. Oh, there's my GoDocs. This told me one document was just updated. Um, so I tap on that, go to my photos. I want to bring in a photo into my blog post. I just tap it, drag it in, and there it is. Straight out of my Picasso web albums. If that didn't impress you, then I'm done. There's nothing else I can show you today that's, you know, that's going to do. And then if I want to change any aspect of that image, I can double tap it. And then I get all those options. So I can change the width, uh, any, anything that I want to do with that image. Same thing with videos. If I want to pull in a video into my blog post, if it's in YouTube, I go to YouTube. I tap on my uploads. Or I could search for something. So if there was a video that I wanted to use from somebody else's channel or, or playlist, I could do that. But I can go down and drag in this video. And again, it puts it right into the post. So very easy to use um, and just a really superb, I think, interface. And if you don't use Blogger, like I said, it, it interfaces with WordPress and a whole bunch of other blogging platforms. Go through this real quickly here. Google Search, um, this is also excellent. I do like the search that's built into the iPad. I mean, Spotlight's nice, but it's nice to just jump right on the web and do your search. Um, if you haven't played around with this, it gives you quick access to Google's web applications. So some of the ones that I've talked about, there's also links within this app to the web-based versions of that in the mobile browser. <coughs> uh, you can search via voice or images. So it's got Google goggles built in. So you can take a picture of something, and it will find similar images or do a search based on that image. And it saves your search history. And another neat little feature is that you can actually split your screen so you can see the browser and your search results at the same time and then tap on your next search result and see it on the right-hand side so you can very quickly try to find the information you were looking for in your query. Yes? And you're talking about an app? Instagrok is really good. Um, if you haven't checked out the website, it's instagrok.com. It's a very kid-friendly, school-friendly, edu-friendly search. I don't think they have an app, but I believe you can access it through mobile Safari. Instagrok. 
It's cool. It has a slider at the top where you can adjust. It's got a picture of Albert Einstein, I think, and then a little blackboard. And so as you drag it towards Albert Einstein, your research results become more advanced. If you drag it the other way, they kind of become less advanced. And so you can decide how, where you are on that slider. Has anybody used Instagrok? No, one? It's I-N-S, just Insta and Grok, G-R-O-K. It's amazing. It'll blow your mind. It'll change your life, actually, when you leave here. <laughs> you will be 10% smarter. Here, I'll show you. So let me, let me quickly flip back to my iPad. So if I go into the search app, and I need to find where I put it on here. Here we go. <clears throat> let me move my smart cover. If you search for something, so let's say I do a search for blue whales because I'm huge into whaling. I mean, not, I mean, looking at whales, not, yeah. <laughs> not the other thing. Uh, so if I tap on a search result, I've loaded up Wikipedia, but if I swipe over, there's my results, and so I can see both the current web page and then move to another one, and it'll update that on the other side of the, the screen. Pretty awesome. So it's just a swipe. You just swipe over, you can see your search results, and then you'll see that page update as you tap on the different websites. Pretty awesome. <clears throat> and it saves all those. If I go back to the main page, you tap on history, and you'll see all your search results saved there. And supposedly, the rumor was that this was going to have similar features to Google Now, where it was going to have like weather and some other types of updates. But it just they, I guess they haven't pushed that update out yet. So I'm hopeful that that will happen. Google Reader. I love Reader. This is like my favorite app for consuming blogs, uh, wikis, websites. If you use Google Reader at all or you use RSS feeds, it's fantastic. It's available on uh, iPhone, iPad, and they have a, a version for Macs. Uh, so if you have a PC, I would buy a Mac. Uh, I'm just kidding. It's, it's OK. I, uh, but there isn't a version for PCs, only for Macs. So the really great thing about this app, and I've tried lots of them, is if you subscribe to lots of blogs and feeds, you can get through them very quickly, which I think is important. Um, and you can very quickly star ones that you want to get back to. So like I said, I think it's really the best Google Reader client for iOS. Uh, and it also ties into pretty much a veritable smorgasbord of sharing options or sites. So if you use Readability, you use Pocket, you use Instapaper, Evernote, you can send it to almost any service that you want to. I think except Google Buzz. It does not, unfortunately, work with that. But everything else you can share with those services uh, and very easily star and mark articles that you're interested in. Anybody big Google Reader fans out here? Anybody use RSS? If you're not using RSS, that makes your life so much easier. Believe me. You need, to ask, so you need to find a family member who's using RSS feeds, let them do an intervention. You'll be a much, much better off. Um, all right? So this is what it looks like. And it's not the prettiest app in the world. I mean, the, the color scheme is kind of gray and, and black and more gray. But here you'll see my different folders of feeds. So if I go into education, for example, I'll see a list, and again, I can very quickly scroll through this. If I see something that's interesting, you just slide to the left, and it stars it. And that's what I do. I'll go through my feeds. I'll read those posts. I slide it or swipe it to the right. I star it. And then when I have time, I can come back and read it later. So you can very quickly get through that. If I find something I want to share, when I hit that Share button up here, you can see all the different services, Delicious, Pinboard, Instapaper, Pocket, Twitter. And then you can also mail the message or mail the link to the article. Yes, it'll do that. You can have it, you can set it that way. Another thing you can do is you can actually pinch, and I'm probably not going to be able to do this, but when you get halfway through the list, you can actually spread it. You can pinch two posts apart. It'll mark everything red above where you split it. It's a hard gesture, though. I, it takes lots of, lots of practice. Um, but then you have access, of course, to, if I go back, here's my starred articles, there's my unread, and then you can look at a list of everything. So it's my favorite Google Reader client. 
All right, YouTube. After iOS 6 got released, Apple pretty much removed uh, most aspects of Google from the device, at least in its format of the box, except for search. So you know, you don't have Google Maps, you don't have YouTube. Um, Jasmine is super califragilistic. I mean, it's uh, it's an amazing YouTube client uh, for the iPad. It is free. But if you want to unlock their parental controls, you pay $1.99. The cool thing about the parental controls is you can basically lock down YouTube. So you can say, you have access to these playlists. You cannot search for new videos. You cannot look at favorite videos. You can turn off comments. You can turn off suggested videos. You can completely customize the YouTube experience on iOS. Uh, so I would download this now. I mean, it really it is that good. Um, so simple YouTube client. You can switch between a light and a dark theme. So if you watch a lot of video at night under the covers, uh, <laughs> you don't want to disturb your significant other. You can do that. It's got the, the other, uh, like I said, the other theme. You can modify and create new playlists in Jasmine. So I can name a new playlist and start adding videos to it, which is fantastic. <clears throat> like I said, parental controls. Um, so let me go ahead and open that up so you can check this out. Uh, let's go into Jasmine. So like I said, very, very simple UI. If you tap that little star at the top, then it'll switch into night mode. And then you tap it again, and you switch back to the daytime mode. So a couple neat things about this is I can go into my playlist. I can manage my existing ones. So you're going to see my playlist here for my, uh, my daughter should come up here shortly. There we go. And here's a sample playlist I just created yesterday. If I want to create a new one, I just hit new playlist. I'm going to give it a name. So we're just going to do MI Google. And then I can go back and search for something. So let's do Bill Nye. I'm a huge Bill Nye fan. And so we're going to pull up some videos on Bill Nye. And I taught uh, fourth and fifth grade, so I did a lot of stuff with astronomy. So I'm interested in the distance between the planets. So I can go in here and then tap Add to Playlist and add it to my MI Google playlist. And now I've just created a new playlist in the app. That, that should have blown your mind right there. That, if that didn't do it, then I'll show you the parental controls. So you go in here, you create a four-digit passcode. And you can, like I said, turn off everything. So you go into, for example, uh, curated content, playlists you can say which playlist they have access to. So you can create a curated list of, of, of videos that you want them to watch. And they can only watch those videos within the app. Um, you could also, for example, only allow them to access certain subscriptions. So if they subscribe to only certain channels, um, you can do that. Then you can lock down certain areas. Like I said, you can enable search, favorites. In video interaction, you can remove links to websites. So if I don't want them to see that, I don't want them to see comments. It's completely customizable YouTube experience. So way better than YouTube was before on iOS. And like I said, for $1.99, you unlock those parental controls. Jasmine. Google Translate. Um, how many of you have this installed? All right, I've heard mixed things, uh, or should I say mixed feelings about this uh, from different forms of language teachers. I think it's OK. Um, it does some kind of cool stuff. You know, you can translate between 64 different languages, uh, spoken translation in 24 languages, and then you can save translations for later use. Chrome. A couple cool things about this. It does sync your data. So obviously, it's not going to sync your extensions and web apps, but it will sync your Omnibox data, your passwords, and any other open tabs you have from other installs of Chrome. So if you have Chrome on your desktop, you have Chrome on your iPad, it will sync any of those open tabs so you can still see those or open those up on your iPad or iOS device. You can actually send pages from Chrome to your device. So if you go to Cloud Print or print something, you should see your iPad or your iPhone or iPod Touch. And essentially, when you print it, it'll open up that page the next time you open up Chrome. And then you can also browse in incognito mode if you're looking at some bizarre things like miniature ponies. I don't know. If you don't want to save your browser history. Now, if you don't want to use Chrome, but you like the idea of syncing, there's an app out there called Chrome Sync Pro. 
which syncs your bookmarks, uh, your open tabs, and your history, but doesn't do anything else. So if you just like to sync things, or you want to sync stuff, then you can use Chrome Sync Pro. Uh, so it's actually, there's two parts to this. You have to install the Chrome extension, and it's available at this web address. Um, so you go there, you install the extension in Chrome, and then you download the app on your iPad, and it syncs, like I said, your web history, bookmarks, and open tabs. So it just, it just does the syncing. Google Voice. You can actually make phone calls from your iPad. I know everybody's probably dying to do that, right? As you're jogging through the park, you have your iPad up here. Um, why would anybody look at you weird? That's perfectly normal to make long distance calls. So you can do that with GV Mobile Plus. Um, you can do that with Talkatone, but the problem with Talkatone is, again, it's not beautiful. I like things that, you know, look nice, have an intuitive interface, and I much prefer GV Mobile Plus, but I'm gonna use Talkatone to actually connect the calls. So you can, you know, look at your text messages, look at your voicemails in GV Mobile Plus, but you'll actually use Talkatone to connect the call. So like I said, if you need to receive your text messages or make phone calls from your iPad, yes, you can do that. All right, we've got a couple more left. Picasa, uh, MyPix HD is great. It'll allow you to manage your existing albums, and you can also create new ones from photos that you have on your iPad. So if you take a whole bunch of photos with your iPad, you can create a new album, upload it to Picasa Web Albums. You can share it. It'll give you the link to the album. Um, it's amazing. So you can change the access to it, so you can do public unlisted or sign-in required. Uh, you can share via link, and it supports multiple accounts, like most of the apps that I'm sharing with you today. So this is what it looks like, and you can see all my Picasso web albums. So I can go into one, for example. Um, this is my daughter, Maya, and you know I already created this album. I was using it uh, to demonstrate Stupiflix, and if I go into the information, for example, you can see that's where I can change the permissions. So I can make it sign-in required, unlisted, or public. And this is, again, on an already existing album. You can tap on the link button down at the bottom, and so I can email the link or copy the link to this album. And if I tap the action button down here in the corner, that's where I can tap on several photos and move them, email them, save them, or delete them from the album. But you can also create new ones. So if you have photos on your iPad, I can tap on Upload. I tap the plus button, and you can create a new album. So we'll just put in a real quick title here. Title. And then once I do that, I hit Save. And if I go into that album, now I can select photos from my camera roll that I want to upload. So I'll just pick a couple here real quick. Say Add to Queue and then start upload, and now it creates the new album and uploads all those photos to Picasso Web Albums. Yeah. It's called MyPix HD. Yeah, MyPix HD. All right, Google Earth. I love Google Earth, and I really, really love it on the iPad, and I think the reason is because to me it feels more intuitive manipulating the Earth with my fingers than it does with a mouse and keyboard. And a couple of cool things that you can do with this, one is, you know, you can actually load Google Earth Tours or Lit Trips on your iPad. How many of you have used uh, Google Lit Trips? Okay, so a few of you have. If you haven't check in, checked out the website, it's googlelittrips.com, and it's by another Google certified teacher named Jerome Berg. And so the idea is that for certain books, like My Brother Sam is Dead, um, The Aeneid, you actually will follow the characters in Google Earth where they travel. So it's a pretty cool concept. And you can load those tours on your iPad. It also has a tour guide feature now where you can explore different locations around the world. Uh, and they also added 3D buildings just recently. So just to show you the, the literary tours, because this is really, really amazing. And let me go in here. And what I'll do is um, I will add on the website for the conference, I'll add a handout there that'll walk you through you know, how do you load these on the iPad. Wow, that was crazy. It was like. It's like Max Headroom right there. OK. So if you go to Layers, one of the things you'll see there is My Maps. And so it'll connect to your Maps account, and it'll pull in any of the maps that you have saved. 
you can upload CAMZ or CAMEL files to Google Maps Online, and then it connects to that and loads them into Google Earth. So here is the Grapes of Wrath tour, one of my favorite books. Not really, I just said that. It's not one of my favorite books. Um, but you can see the tour there, so we can trace where the Jode family traveled from Oklahoma out to the West Coast. And the neat thing about this is, if I go in here and tap on these individual place marks, it's going to open up that little bubble, and you can include hyperlinks and images uh, within there and include additional information about that chapter um, as you're reading that book in class. So the only thing it will not do that you can do on the desktop, it will not autoplay the tour, but you can load the tour on your mobile device. All right, moving right along. Uh, Google Plus, and I know, again, that's not available yet for K-12, but I think it will be fairly soon. Uh, you can post and view your stream. And what I found is that it seems to me that people are posting a lot more quality content on Google Plus than Facebook. I mean, I could be wrong, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, but usually when I see people using Facebook, it's like, hey, I just ate a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. When I look on Google Plus, people are actually posting mind-provoking thoughts and articles, and so I use that as part of my professional development. I follow certain people, or I put them in a circle, and they have interesting things to say. Um, you know, another really powerful tool is you can join and create Hangouts. So I can have a video conference with up to 10 people uh, simultaneously from the Google Plus app. You can schedule events. I believe just like, you know, there's a, an event for today for the conference in Google Plus. Um, and you can automatically have it upload your photos to Google Plus. So you can turn that on, and whenever you take photos and you connect to Wi-Fi, it will upload those photos into a private album. Google Play Books. This actually has one unique feature that Amazon Kindle app and the Nook app do not have, which is that it will translate phrases that you highlight in the book. So it does do sort of the normal, usual suspects that you can highlight, add notes, and bookmark, but it'll translate pages into 54 different languages. So if you highlight a passage in your book, it'll translate that into Spanish, French, German, Dutch, etc. All right, and I believe, it's kind of wrapping up other tools, Google Play Music, you can upload up to 20,000 tracks into Google Play Music. If you haven't done this, again, awesome. And you have your music at wherever you are. There's a great app for streaming it to your iDevice, which is called G Music. And so what you can do is stream your Google Music collection to your iPad or iPhone or iPad, or sorry, iPod Touch. Uh, and then you can even save that music offline. So if you don't have a connection, you can load it on your device. Just a couple more here. And these are just miscellaneous apps that kind of tie into the Google-verse. Q, has anybody used this? A website is queup.com. It is amazing. It is only available right now for uh, iPod Touch and iPhone. They, don't, they have not made an iPad version yet. But basically what it does is it takes all your Google stuff, your docs, your calendar, your contacts, Gmail, and Reader, and makes it a searchable database. So if I want to find something, a contact, or I want to find a calendar appointment, I open up Q, I type in what it is, it pulls it up. It'll also pull up any related docs, any related contacts. It's amazing. And then not only that, but it shows you your day. And for example, if you have a calendar appointment and you invited somebody to that, it'll actually pull up their contact info right next to the calendar appointment or a document that was about that same event. It is truly revolutionary and amazing. Uh, and again, it's queup.com. You can use it online, but you can also use it on your iPhone or iPod Touch. And I just want to show this to you because it really is quite breathtaking. Uh, so let me close this and open up Q. It should update here in just a second, hopefully. Oh, there we go. And so these are all the accounts I have connected. I have my uh, multiple calendar accounts, Google Docs, Google Contacts, Google Reader, uh, and then so here's today. But if you swipe through, you can see it's pulling in my different calendar appointments. It tells me when the sun comes up, when the sun sets. It'll show the weather if it's available. But then another cool thing that it does is, for example, that rehearsal, if I had somebody's name attached to that particular event, it would put that person's contact info underneath that calendar event. Or you can just hit search, and I could search for something. So if I'm looking for my coworker, Katie, I just tap 
her name or type it in, and it pulls up her contact info, any emails about her, any calendar appointments, and any documents with her name that I've shared with her or she's in the document. That's amazing. So it's called Q. All right, just two more. Uh, handoff, very similar to Chrome to phone extension, except this is an, it's an extension that allows you to send web pages to your iOS device. And you can do it from Safari, Firefox, and Chrome. So it's not just Chrome. Push any web page to any iDevice. So you find a web page, you click the extension, you pick the device you want to send it to, and it opens it up on your, on your device. And it's the extensions, if you want to install it in your browser, are available at handoffapp.com. And then the last one, um, iCab Mobile. It's, a, it's an alternative browser. What you can do with this, though, is you can save YouTube videos on your iPad. So if you create a playlist for your students, you want them to have access to it because maybe they don't have internet at home or it's sketchy internet, you can save them with iCab Mobile. So like I said, it's an alternative browser to Safari and Chrome. You can save YouTube videos in your camera roll. You can change your browser ID, so you can tell it to mimic Internet Explorer or Firefox or Desktop Safari. And it supports all these different plugins. One of them, for example, is you can turn any web page into a PDF or an EPUB. It's pretty amazing. So it's, like I said, an alternative browser to Safari and Chrome. All right, well, thank you guys very much. I know I kind of blew through a tremendous amount of apps, but try to cover all the bases there. Uh, and if you have any suggestions for me, if you know of one better, please let me know. I, I'd love to hear that. Uh, and if you have any questions after today, there's my contact info. Thank you very much.